हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ रेणुका एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन द फोर्थ चैप्टर ऑफ जोग्राफी दैट इज एग्रीकल्चर लेट एस प्रोसीड विद द डेफिनेशन एंड इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर इंडिया इज एन एग्रीकल्चरली इम्पोर्टेंट कंट्री टू थर्ड्स ऑफ इट्स पॉपुलेशन इज एंगेज इन एग्रीकल्चरल एक्टिविटी एग्रीकल्चर इज द प्राइमरी एक्टिविटी विच प्रोड्यूजेस मोस्ट ऑफ द फूड दैट वी कंज्यूम Beside food grain, it also produces a raw material for for various industries. For example, cotton from cotton field to cotton textile. Now let us learn types of farming. As time passes on, the cultivation methods have changed. significantly depending upon the characteristics of physical environment technological know-how and socio cultural practice there are two types of farming method they are subsistence farming in subsistence farming there are two types again two types that is primitive subsistence farming and intensive subsistence farming next commercial farming and then plantation let us start with the primitive subsistence farming this type of farming is practiced on small patches of land with the help of primitive tool like hoe jow and digging sticks and family community labor this type of farming depends upon monsoon natural fertility of the soil and suitability of the of other environmental conditions to the crops grown it is a slash and a burn agriculture here the farmer clears a patch of land and produce cereals and other food crops to sustain their family when the soil fertility decreases the farmer shift and clear a fresh patch of land for cultivation this type of shifting allows nature to replenish the fertility of the soil through natural process this is known by different name in different part of the country like jumming in north eastern states next is intensive subsistence farming in intensive subsistence agriculture the farmer cultivates a small plot of land using simple tool and more labor farmers use their small land holdings to produce enough for their local consumption while remaining produce is used for exchange against other goods in this farming farmer uses modern technique like hyv seeds irrigation facilities and other inputs to grow more on the small piece of land now let us see the difference between primitive subsistence and intensive subsistence this type of farming practiced on small patches of land with the help of primitive tool like hoe dow digging stick this type of farming practiced with the help of modern tools and modern inputs land productivity under this type of agriculture remains very low land productivity under this type of agriculture is high this type of agriculture is practiced in north east state This type of agriculture is practiced in the northern plains. Let us see commercial farming. Commercial farming is a type of farming in which the crops are grown for commercial use only that is for selling purpose. In it is a modernized method for of farming that is undertaken on a large scale. In this type of farming the large land labor and machines are used. Here farmer uses higher dose of modern inputs like HYV seeds chemical fertilizers insecticides pesticides in order to obtain higher productivity rice is a commercial crop in haryana and punjab now let us see the next type of farming that is plantation plantation means growing a particular kind of plant in an area so plantation is also a type of commercial farming a plantation is a large scale estate meant for farming that specialized in cash crops the crops that are grown include cotton coffee tea coca sugarcane opium sisal oil seed oil palms fruits rubber trees and forest trees In plantation particular types of trees are grown plantation cover large tracts of land using capital intensive input with the help of migrant laborers 
that means that in plantation only a particular type of plant is grown over here that is used for selling purpose that is for commercial purpose. Now let us see the cropping pattern. India has three cropping seasons that is Rabi, Kharif and Zaid. Rabi crops. Rabi crops are sown in winter from October to December and harvested in summer from April to June. Some of the important Rabi crops are wheat, barley, peas, gram and mustard. These crops are mostly grown in states like Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh. Availability of precipitation during winter months due to the, due to the western temperate cyclone help in the success of these crops. Kharif crop. Kharif crops are grown with the onset of monsoon that is beginning of monsoon in different parts of the country and these are harvested in September and October. Important crops during these seasons are paddy, maize, jawar, bajra, tuwar, moong, udar, cotton, jute, groundnut and soya bean. Some of the most important rice growing regions are Assam, West Bengal, coastal regions of Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Maharashtra, particularly the Konkan coast along with the Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Recently, paddy has become an important crop of Punjab and Haryana. Zayed In between the Rabi and the Kharif season, there is a short season during the summer months known as Zayed season. Important crops grown are watermelon, muskmelon, cucumber, vegetables and fodder crops. Let us see the major crops in India. Major crops, a variety of food and non-food crops are grown in different parts of the country depending upon the variation in soil, climate and cultivation practice. Major crops grown in India are rice, wheat, millets, pulse, tea, pulses, tea, coffee, sugarcane, oil seeds, cotton and jute. Let us start with rice. Rice is a staple food crop. Our country is the second largest producer of rice in the world after China. It is a kharif crop which requires high temperature that is about 25 degrees Celsius and high humidity with annual rainfall above 100 cm. It is grown in the plains of north and northeastern India, coastal areas and deltatic region. Now let us see wheat. The second most important cereal crop is wheat. It is the main food crop in north and northwestern part of the country. This rabi crop requires a cool growing season with 50 to 75 centimeter of annual rainfall and a bright sunshine at the time of ripening. Wheat growing regions are Ganga Satluj plains in the northwest and black soil regions of the Deccan. The major wheat producing states are Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan and parts of Madhya Pradesh. Let us start millets. Jawar, Bajra and Ragi are the important millets grown in India. Though these are known as coarse grain, they have very high nutritional value. For example, Ragi is a very rich in iron, calcium and other micronutrients and roughage. Bajra grows well on sandy soils and shallow black soils. Major Bajra producing states were Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Haryana. Ragi is a crop of dry regions and glow, grows well on red, black, sandy, loamy and shallow black soils. Major ragi, ragi producing states are Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Jharkhand and Arunachal Pradesh. Jawar is the third most important food crop with respect to area and production. It is a rain-fed crop mostly grown in the moist areas which hardly needs irrigation. Major Jawa producing states were Raj Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Next is maize. It is a crop which is used both as food and fodder. That means human being can also can eat and we can also feed it to cattle also. It is a kharif crop which requires temperature between 21 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius and grows with 
well in allo old alluvial soil in some states like Bihar. Maize cultivation is grown in rubby seasons also. Use of modern inputs such as HYV seeds, fertilizer and aggregation have contributed to increasing production of maize. Major maize producing states are Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Madhya Pradesh. Pulses India is the largest producer as well as the consumer of pulses in the world. These are the major source of protein in a vegetarian diet. Major pulses that are grown in India are tuar, udad, moong, masoor, peas and gram. Pulses need less moisture and survive even in dry condition. Being leguminous crop, all these crops except arhar helps in restoring soil fertility by fixing nitrogen from the air. Therefore, these are mostly grown in rotation with other crops. Major pulse producing states in India are Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Now let us see some food crops other than grains. Sugarcane. It is tropical as well as subtropical crop. It is grown, grows well in hot and humid climate with a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius and an annual rainfall between 75 centimeters and 100 centimeters. Irrigation is required in the regions of low rainfall. It can be grown on variety of soils and need manual labor for sowing to harvesting. India is the second largest producer of sugarcane only after Brazil. The major sugarcane producing states are Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Bihar, Punjab and Haryana. Let us see oil seeds. India was the second largest producer of groundnut in the world after China. Different oil seeds are grown covering approximately 12% of the total cropped area of the country. Main oil seed produced in India are groundnut, mustard, coconut, sesame, till, soya bean, castor seeds, cotton seeds and lean seed and sunflower. Most of these are edible and used as cooking medium. However, some of these are also used as raw material in the production of soaps, cosmetic and ointment. Groundnut is a kharif crop and accounts for about half of the major oil seeds produced in the country. Gujarat was the largest producer of groundnut followed by Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Tea cultivation is an example of plantation agriculture. It is also an important beverage crop introduced in India initially by the British. Today, most of the tea plantations are owned by Indians. The tea plant grow well in the tropical and the subtropical climates and grow with the deep and fertile well-drained soil rich in humus and organic matter. Frequent showers evenly distributed over the years ensuring continuous growth of tender leaves. Tea is a labor-intensive industry. It requires abundant, cheap and skilled labor. Major tree producing states are Assam, Hills of Darjeeling, Jalpai Guri districts, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Apart from these, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Meghalaya, Andhra Pradesh and Tripura are also tree producing states in the country. India was the third largest producer of tree after China and Turkey. Coffee India produced 3.2% of the world coffee production. Indian coffee is known in the world for its good quality. The Arabia variety initially brought from Yemen is produced in the country. This variety is in great demand all over the world. Initially, its cultivation was introduced on the Baba Bhutan hills and even today its cultivation is confined to the Nilgiri in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Horticulture crops India was the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world after China. India is a producer of tropical as well as temperate fruits. Mango of Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal, oranges of Nagpur and Chirapunji, bananas of Kerala, Mizora, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu, lychee and guava of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, pineapples of Meghalaya, grapes of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Maharashtra, apple, pears, apricots and walnuts of Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh are in great demand in the world over. India produces about 13% of the world's vegetable. It is an important producer of pea, cauliflower, onion, cabbage, tomato, brinjal and potato. Now, let us see non-food crops. Rubber 
Rubber is an equatorial crop but under special condition it is also grown in tropical and subtropical area. It requires moist and humid climate with a rainfall of more than 200 cm and temperature about 25 degrees Celsius. Rubber is an important industrial raw material. It is mainly grown in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Garo Hills of Meghalaya. In 2010-2011, India ranked fourth among the world natural rubber producers. Fibrous crops Cotton, jute, hemp and natural silk are the fourth major fiber crops grown in India. The first three are derived from the crops grown in the soil and the latter is obtained from cocoons of the silk form fed on green leaves, especially mulberry. Rearing of silk worms for the production of the silk fiber is known as sericulture. Let us see fibrous crop in detail. Cotton. India is believed to be the original homeland of cotton plant. Cotton is one of the main raw materials for the cotton textile industries. Cotton grows well in the drier parts of the black cotton soil of Deccan Plateau. India was the second largest producer of cotton after China. It requires high temperature, light rainfall or irrigation, frost freeze days, 210 frost freeze days and bright sunshine for its growth. It is a kharif crop and requires 6 to 8 months to mature. Major cotton producing states are Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. Jute It is known as the golden fiber. Jute grows well on well-drained fertile soils in the flood plains where soils are renewed every year. High temperature is required during the time of growth. West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, Odisha and Meghalaya are the major jute producing states. It is used in making gunny bags, mats, ropes, yarn, carpets. Due to the high cost, it is losing market to synthetic fibers and packaging materials, particularly the nylon. Now, just let us see the technological and institutional reform. More than 60% of Indian population depends on agriculture. After independence, major institutional reforms such as collectivization, consolidation of holding, cooperation and abolition of zamindari etc. were given priority. In 1960s and 1970s, technical reforms such as green revolution and white revolution also introduced to improve the conditions of agriculture. In 1980s and 1990s, various provisions for crop insurance, establishment of Grameen banks for providing loan facilities to farmers at low rate of interest. Kisan Credit Card, Personal Accident Insurance Schemes are some of the other schemes introduced by Government of India for the benefit of the farmer. Special weather bulletins and agricultural program for farmers were also introduced on the radio and television. The government also announced minimum support price, remunerative and procurement prices for import important crops to check the exploitation of farmers by the spectaculators and middlemen. Let's see the contribution of agriculture to the national economy, employment and output. In 2010-11, about 52% of the total workforce of India was employed by the farm sector. The GDP growth rate is increasing over the years. It is not generating sufficient employment opportunities in the country. Subsidy on fertilizers is decreased leading to increase in the cost of production. Moreover, the reduction in import duties on agricultural products have proved determinant to agriculture in the country. Now, let's see the food security. In order to ensure the availability of food to all sections of society, our government carefully designed a national food security system. It consists of two components, buffer stock and public distribution system. Public distribution system, that is PDS, is a program which provide food grains and other essential commodities at subsidized prices in the rural and urban areas. Food Corporation of India, that is FCI, is responsible for procuring and stocking food grain, whereas distribution is ensured by public distribution system PDS. The primary objective of national food security are ensure availability of food grains to common people at an affordable price, the poor should have access to food, fixing the support price for procurement of wheat and rice to maintain their stocks, 
The FCI procures food grain from the farmers at the government announced minimum support price. The government used to provide subsidies on agricultural inputs such as fertilizers, power and water. Now let us see the impact of globalization on agriculture. Globalization is present at the time of colonization. During the British period, cotton belts of India attracted the British and ultimately cotton was exported to Britain as a raw material for the textile industry. After 1990s, the farmers in India have been exposed to new challenges. The agricultural products of India are not able to compete with the developed countries because of highly subsidized agriculture in those countries. Genetic engineering is revolutionizing the agricultural production nowadays. In fact, organic farming is much in vogue today because it is practiced without factory made chemicals such as fertilizers and pesticides. Hence, it does not affect environment in a negative manner. Thank you.